And in that, I did mention that we are supposed to explain the principles of business analytics, describe what predictive analytics is, not just describing, but we are supposed to describe and also demonstrate that, okay, with a practical uh, approach. And also to describe prescriptive analytics, okay, practically and solve some example. Then finally, we are to explain the implementation of the various techniques in business analytics. Okay, moving on. These are the performance indicators we are expected to uh, measure ourselves with. Okay, so by the end of the day, these are key things that we should have known. The first one is to be able to explain the principles of business analytics, define business analytics and its use in business, describe business analytics as a business making tool, challenges and misuse of business analytics. Two, we are going to look at predictive analytics, okay, where we look at aspects of logistic modeling as a predictive tool, also look at the aspect of big data, what is it? and how relevant is it and what are the challenges associated with big data. Then again, we're going to look at how to what, assess quality of predictions and quantify errors, okay? And also discuss the notion of in-sample and out-of-sample predictions, okay? So here we are very likely to look at regression modeling, multiple regression modeling, and uh, non that is linear multiple regression and then nonlinear models like logistic regression, okay, for the data we have from the various companies. Now, again, we're also supposed to, for the main, that's one of our main measurements, we are supposed to also look at pre prescriptive analytics where we'll be looking at optimization, uh, specifically look at LP problems, and then how to use uh, uh computer softwares okay for such solutions and then we're also going to write um, algorithms okay using softwares like excel okay to optimize and find the optimal solution okay for various uh, business problem okay then um yes by so doing once we do that practically we should be able to use computer softwares and then also know how to uh, interpret the data for decision making, okay? In uh, optimization, the results are straightforward. We will we, we usually see the decision by the time we even finish the solution. Then finally, we are supposed to explain the implementation. How is uh, business analytics implemented? What are the stages, okay, in applying business analytics? We need to look at the, 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 the process, okay, of business analytics and also to use algorithms in the optimization that we've already discussed. It will be treated in the state three, okay? We'll combine it with the state three whilst doing the optimization. Now, mode of delivery, we'll be doing lecture, lecturing, face-to-face uh, -face and uh, online lectures. Then we're also going to have practical sessions, okay? Pascal sessions using Excel. We're also going to use um, SPSS. And then if possible, uh, we will we'll make use of another software, maybe R or another software altogether. We're going to have assignments. We'll have project works where you have to present, okay, in individual in groups. These are the main reference texts, okay, Evans Business Analytics, which will be my key material I'll be using, as well as the uh, Lawson and Tolang 2016 business analytics for managers. Yeah, now these are the weekly topics we expect. Okay, on week one, we are going to define business analytics. We want to know what it is, its uses, and some key concepts and definitions, like if we're talking about big data, what is it at all? Uh, 
how does it come into this whole concept of business analytics? How different is analytics from, uh, uh, how do we call it, data science? Okay. Um, yeah, so we'll look at some of those basic, basic definitions and uh, concepts around uh, our uh, main team or our, our, our course, okay? Then in week two, we'll progress to what really is descriptive analytics. We'll look at some examples and then try to take some practical, okay, data. And then see how we can start with some descriptive exploratory and then move on to prescriptive, uh, predictive an analytics, okay? Then again, after explaining those concepts now, we'll have to introduce ourselves to the Saska softwares. So you need to, you can see in week two, I've issued uh, an instruction there that you have to install SPSS, okay? On your computer. Then again, you have to enable the solver adding in your Excel, okay? So you go to Excel, try and enable the solver uh, software, adding software, okay? Before we get to week two because we are going to need them along the line. Once we get to uh, pre predictive, prescriptive uh, analytics, we are going to make use of the solver software. Okay, then we have, uh, we'll also be demonstrating tools used to leverage data for predictive purposes, like linear modeling, uh, and then data transformation. So along the line of linear modeling, we'll do some exploratory uh, analysis whilst we are doing the modeling so that we can actually determine the right type of model which will be used at any given point of time uh, in time whether it is linear if the data is non-linear how do we transform it we, we need to look at that okay then again we'll look at the interpretation by the time we finish modeling uh, and by week four we we should be done with uh, linear modeling that is uh, all things being equal if we are able to finish then we'll be going into uh, non-linear modeling okay where the key one we'll be looking at will be logistic regression okay and its interpretation so and these ones these sessions are all going to be very practical so you need the software installed okay so we from week two to week four we are going to do a lot of practical work in class, okay? We just hope to finish by week four, but if not, it may, sometimes the practical might delay, but by week five, we should finish with that. Then uh, we will discuss the concept of uh, big data, okay? And uh, mass customization of uh, services, and then talk about how they incorporate into this whole thing, how they provide us data and how we can make use of our tools, okay, to analyze them. Uh, then again, we have to look at the concept of assessing the quality of prediction. Of course, you can't predict without what, uh, trying to assess the quality of such a prediction and also to quantify the amount of error generated by the models. Every model generates some amount of error, okay? So we need to to determine how 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 well is our model predicting the observed data okay so we can make quality prediction and also what is the margin of error within this data yeah step six we look at uh, discussing the notion of in out of sample uh, prediction and explaining some other skills they will come along with the modeling uh, so whilst we are doing them we'll be explaining it so some of this topic, as we go by, you see that we, it, it will not follow uh, exact like a, a whole topic on this one, but we will incorporate it because we are going to do more of a practical class. Then once we are done with predictive analytics, we come to prescriptive analytics. And uh, let me mention prescriptive does not mean uh, that that is the only, over there we are going to do optimization, but that is not the only technique used in optimization. Just that for linear programming and optimization models, okay, like queuing systems, like the LP problems and all that. By the time you finish modeling, you already have what? The decision 
Uh -huh. So we, we call them prescriptive what? models, okay? But in any case, when we talk about prescriptives, we, we are talking about making decisions, making inferences, okay? So which means that even our predictive models can also end up in certain findings which will lead to very critical what? prescriptions, okay, for the business. Okay, then uh, we're also going to do some simulation based on the same optimization. Uh, we'll do some simulation, change some things here, and then we call it sensitivity analysis, okay, within the concept of uh, optimization. And simulation is general in general modeling, like queuing models and all that. How do you simulate certain situations and certain scenarios? So if we get to the bankers, to the bank, and you have uh, to tell us, okay, how is that going to affect the productivity of such a bank? Okay, given the number of uh, customers that have to queue, okay, in a line at the bank, okay, should we make use of one or two tellers, or should we add an, an additional teller, or rather, should we keep the two tellers and then increase what the service time of this? I mean, decrease the service time. To, to make what well, the, the queues shorter. So these are some of the uh, analysis when it comes to simulation and evaluation. Okay, then finally, by week four, we will be wrapping up week 12, we'll be wrapping up on uh, these techniques, whereby we, we talk about the general processes in the implementation of what business analytics. Okay, by then we would have had a very fair idea about the entire course and I know exactly how to uh, implement what analytics in uh, businesses to optimize what profitability. Okay, then um, uh, generally you guys know the assessment uh, methods, how much mark goes for this semester, end of semester and all that. So we are not going to touch on that. And again, on uh, with regards to issues concerning plagiarism, okay that too you are very much aware eh? and you're also very aware that just to uh, motivate my students i try to bring a number about 30 to 40 percent of my assignment questions into the exams that too i'm sure you are very aware of it so once i give an assignment and you decide to copy it will also go against you in the examination so let's take note of this and then work along now another thing i want to say about my outline the weekly outline is uh, i will update it for you because there are very exciting um, online related videos okay uh, to some of the topics i'll be teaching so you can even watch the videos before coming to class so what i'll do is i've created another column the last column here i'll be searching online and then update uh, all those content to, for you so that in due time you will have uh, uh, url uh, resources also that's the internet links to help you to watch some materials or some videos uh, or even probably additional pdf files for for you okay then you can access it and use it for your studies okay so moving on let's come to We come to our class for today. I hope you can see my screen. Yes, sir. Very good. Okay. What of the next page? Can you see it? No, no. We can see only the, the first page okay. and then the slides. Okay, I experienced the same problem. That is what I'm asking in the earlier class. That's what I'm asking whether you can see. So, uh, hmm. okay, so let me just go uh, stop the, this one. Yeah, so.
the best way to go about it is to share the I think somebody's mic is on, so there is a feedback. Please put it off. So I'm going to share in this mode rather than in the slideshow mode. Okay, so pay attention. Yeah, so I basically, I have this uh, picture here, which gives us a summary of what we are here to do. Okay, so we, we are seeing uh, the computer, uh, making use of our zeros and ones and which is the data okay to make meaning and to come out with uh, conclusions so the course is going to be very much into uh, a computing or statistical analysis practical hands-on that, that that is what i mean very hands-on approach into understanding what we have to learn i think course description have been handled Objectives uh, have been handled. Okay, let me skip that. Reference text to, uh, we've looked at that. So for today, we are looking at the concept of business analytics. What is it? Now, when you look at the diagram we have here, uh, we can see some computers leading to a lot of processing leading to money. Currently, business analytics is one of the hottest topics in today's business. Okay. And uh, a lot of businesses around the globe have big companies, have employed people just for that. Okay. To analyze trends and patterns within the data they are collecting from day-to-day -day activities just to make what maximum profits because they believe that there is a link between the data they are collecting and their prof prof profitability good now the next point we are saying is more and more companies are amass amassing larger and larger amounts of data okay you go to social media media and we have over 1 billion people sending information on Twitter at any given point. Let's say in within, within one second, you have not less than 1 billion people sending information. Half of such information are going to be very large data set like pictures, okay, which are already huge in nature. Then phone calls, when you make a call, it takes note of the phone that called information of the, the phone. It makes it uh, takes uh, data on the time when the phone call was made and the time the phone call ended. It takes um, recording of the phone call itself. Okay, who, it, who the phone call came from and where it is going to. So with one phone call, there is about a number of variables that are measured or metrics that are taken on that one phone call. And you can imagine about 20 million Ghanaians speaking on MTN network within a space of what? 10 seconds or in the space of 60 minutes. You have about 20 million people dialing in for just uh, one company. It means that that company is going to amass a lot of data, huge data sets, not only phone calls. We are, we are running all our whatsapp and even the zoom letters we are running are running on online through the same network so companies are massing larger and larger amounts of data each day and have to store them on bigger and bigger databases okay now we, we started yesterday i was talking to some group or uh, at the basic seven level Okay, and I told them that when computer started and we had the first floppy disks, it could not even take about 50 uh, megabytes of data. Okay, now with the kind of data we are coming in with, we, we, are, we are talking about, uh, uh, um, I mean, gigabytes, we are terabytes, uh, now they even have zizabytes and all that. Eh? 
data is moving higher and higher and we need more storage capacities, which means that there are certain data sets or certain metrics which may not even be important along the line, okay, for a business or which will not be too relevant for the prediction of the outcomes of the profitability of a business. Eh? So we need to carefully examine some patterns, some metrics which are relevant for the prediction of profitability in the business and improvement of the business, as well as satisfying what the interests of our customers on a daily basis. Now, an example there is telephone companies are collecting terabytes of data about who we call, when we call them, how long we talk to them, and so forth and so on. Now, what then is analytics? I told you from the beginning, analytics is about making use of mathematics and statistics to make sense out of what? Data, okay? So as to give informed decisions to improve on what? Businesses. Generally, analytics is actually referred to as data analytics, which is applied in various fields. In fact, almost every field. Okay, but since we are talking about businesses, we are talking about business analytics. So we are limiting our analytics to the business scenarios or industrial scenario. Now, I, I, I defined, or uh, it is analytics is basically defined as the use of one data, information technology, statistical analysis, quantitative methods, and mathematical or computer-based models to help managers gain improved insights about their business operations and make better fact-based decisions. This is what we are saying. So let's assume you, you have, um, let's say an amount of money and you are supplying two models of computers. Okay, and uh, you have a constraint on the number of employees required to manufacture those two brands of computers. And uh, you also have a time frame, okay, which you need to, which, which is available or you require to assemble one computer. Okay, now the question is, how many workers should I employ to assemble this to assemble these uh, computers, and then which computers uh, should I assemble more to make more profits? Because obviously, one computer might be more preferred than others on the on the market, and then one may be more expensive than the other. Okay, so based on the dynamics, you may want to take that into consideration. Now, the limitation here is you cannot sit down to manually do these calculations, okay? Because sometimes the variables are many. The variables you are considering are, are many or the metrics, the metrics you are measuring are many. And again, the records we have available, the number of customers are huge. These are huge data. So it cannot be done mathematically, I mean manually. Hence such a data should, we, we need to employ what? In, um, technology, and statistical softwares to make sense out of the data and also come to a conclusion, a very sound conclusion as to what to do and what not to do, or even predict, uh, let's say a range of values, okay? For which you can um, still work within, giving, okay? The, uh, uh, the, the, the money, the resources available to you, okay? so you can still make profits, the maximum profit out of those resources. Sometimes you may not need more employees. All you need to do is to probably change their schedule, okay, a bit, and then you're going to get maximum out of your employees. <laughs> so these are some of the things we, which business analytics would offer us. Now, where do we apply them? Like we said, 
In the aspect of business, some of the key areas we look at when it comes to business analytics are in the marketing areas, especially, okay? Where we are interested in segregating customers and then finding out who, which customers are very likely to purchase a particular brand, okay? So that we focus on targeting those customers when we are producing those what? Brands. So in marketing, we make use of, marketers make use of analytics very much, okay? Because if the customer is not interested in purchasing a product and you keep marketing the same product to such a customer, hmm, you'll be wasting your time. The customer is not interested. If you don't take care, such a customer will even stop purchasing your products because you're actually intimidating or frustrating the customer with all your marketing tools. Eh? If he's always getting pop-ups on his computer or getting uh, text messages on his computer about some kind of product you are marketing, let's say an insurance uh, package, and you keep calling the customer who is not interested in it, in the long run, you will even end up frustrating the customer and will leave. But at the same time, if we can segregate our customers and then get to know that one particular customer is or this group of customers are very interested in this product you are marketing. Then you target what? Your marketing strategy to those customers only. So when you are sending your text messages, you send it directly to those customers or when you are calling, you send it directly to such customers. Then again, we need them in the uh, management of customer relations. Not only when it comes, yes, okay, we have HR today. So when we talk about customer relations, we're looking at customer orientations. We are looking at the aspect of customer satisfaction, okay? And then um, customer return or, re yeah, return behavior, okay? To come and purchase a particular product, okay? We need business analytics to understand the relationship that exists, okay, between service, and return behavior of these individuals. And one tool that we use or one technique that we use a lot is business analytics. We also have supply chain management, like I explained earlier. You have a set of resources. You want to find out exactly how to go about them. How do I manuf manufacture my product based on what? The demand on the market and preference on the market. You should know business analytics like LP problems should be able to tell you that you need this quantity of items or this quantity of items to help you to know exactly which one will be more preferred to make the maximum profit. Human resource planning. Here again, it, it relates the same example. Okay, so you are working with individuals. Uh, your employees in the company are also internal stakeholders of the company. So what happens to them alongside making a profit, which is the ultimate aim of the business, okay? You also need your HR to make use of business analytics so as to schedule the activities and also to satisfy your internal uh, stakeholders mm, in the business. Then we can also talk about pricing decisions we can talk about financing, we can talk about transportation, all of this involve business analytics. Now we have some practical examples here. We're saying that if we can employ quantitative methods to uh, undercover information in data sets, okay, then we can get more information which companies can use, okay? And that any company that makes use of this analytics are able to gain advantages over less enlightened competitors and are able to, I mean, make more profits than them. Now, the next point says, uh, direct marketers analyze enormous customer databases to see which customers are likely to respond to various products and types of promotion. So that is an example. So once they're able to segregate and know which customers, okay, 
are likely to go for an insurance package, then they will target, target those uh, uh, customers and then direct their marketing strategies to them. Then again, we have an uh, aspect of is marketers can target different classes of customers in different ways to maximum profit. Uh, it's talking about the same thing. Again, uh, a business in the airlines, eh? a business traveler typically makes uh, uh, a train reservation closer to the time of travel than a vacationer. Okay, so business travelers usually make very short notice or book their airlines at a very short time. So if you are an airline and you, you are very much interested or you have a data analytic person to analyze your data, you should be informed and get to know that your business, you, you, your business uh, customers, okay, or business travelers will always come with a short notice. So what you do is on every flight, you are going to reserve what, some seats for the business class. And then you, because it's on short list, they do not want to fail their business trip. Then it means that you can also increase the, the ticket costs, okay? The price on the ticket costs. Uh, so once you do that, even though it's the same plane and the uh, travelers, other people going for maybe visitations or vacations, uh, those on the business class may pay more than those who are going for normal vacations. Why? Because the time of booking the, the flight is very short, okay? So you make these combinations and you are informed by the decisions from your uh, prescriptive analytics to know the number of seats that should be left for the business class. So as to make maximum profits, satisfy all your customers, okay? And then satisfy yourself as well. Now, we, this is a summary on uh, whatever we've said so far, importance of uh, business analytics. We are saying basically that there is a strong relationship between BA, which is business analytics, with the revenue the business makes, with the profitability of businesses and with shareholders return. Those who have invested into the company, okay, expect a return on the company, which means that as much as possible, the, the company needs to what reduce its what expenses or needs to reduce its costs whilst increasing on its revenue so as to be what profitable. Good. Now the next point is BA or business analytics enhances what? Understanding of data. Third point, business analytics is vital for businesses to remain competitive. Uh, the same business, we, even in Ghana, when it comes to mobile communication networks, you have Glow, you have MTN, you have Vodafone, you have Tigo. Okay, so you need to make maximum use of your data and know exactly which um type of what marketing strategy you want to put out there okay in the face of this recent uh, uh, proposal to to parliament okay to even increase the or to tax okay um how do we call it Mo mobile money okay already you can see that one company like vodafone has an advantage because of their marketing strategy, okay, of no charge or mobile money transaction to all networks, okay. So that decision that has been made, made based on the analytics is even going to serve them better under such conditions. You see, good. Then the next point, we are saying that business analytics enable creation of what? Informative reports. So if we want to create reports on your company or to report basically on what is going on in the business, BA enables you to create very nice informative what? reports, not just re empty reports, but you have reports with very strong uh, data summaries. That is what we are saying. Okay, so these are the scope 
or let me say the techniques and the business analytics. Okay, on our outline, the main focus is on predictive and prescriptive analytics. Okay, but we also have what we call as descriptive analytics. And when you read other books, it even talks about exploratory analytics. Okay, now, we, but in class, we are going to look at descriptive, predictive, and uh, prescriptive analytics. What do we mean by descriptive analytics? Descriptive analytics is the aspect which makes of use of um, what we call as descriptive statistics, okay? Uh -huh. To understand past and present uh, information in data, okay? So there we look at aspects like the mean, we look at the distribution of data. When we talk about distributions, uh, we, we can represent the distribution using pie charts, multiple line graphs. We can have uh, histograms, bar chart, multiple bar charts, and all that, okay? Then we talk about when it comes to measures of central location, like the mean, the median, the mode. Uh, we can also look at aspects of uh, some graphical displays like the, the box plots, which can still tell us the, the central tendency as well as the variation in the data set. Okay, so descriptives can tell us a lot, mainly about the measures of central tendency, what is happening in the center of the data, how does the distribution or the pattern in the data look like. Then again, we can also look at um, aspect of variab variability. What is the error in the data? How, how, what is the range in the data? Yeah? So plus which are able to tell us the variations in the data set all fall under what? Descriptive analytics. Then when we come to predictive, predictive is trying to look at uh, historical, historical data or past data, okay? So out of the previous data we have at hand. Uh, can we forecast into the future? Can we tell what is going to happen? What are the patterns within these data sets? Uh, how does variable A relate to variable B? Or how does uh, these various multiple metrics or variables okay, predict our performance probably in the area of customer satisfaction, uh, customer, uh, service quality in the area of customer return or return behavior, okay? So this predictive analytics basically makes use of past data uh, with the aim of predicting into the future. Then we also have prescriptive analytics. When we talk about prescriptive analytics, we are talking about making use of optimization techniques, okay, to optimize our revenue. So all things being equal with the resources at hand, okay? And with constraint on resources, we want to find out what are the possible combinations and what are the, the possible uh, arrangements, okay? We can have to optimize our, our revenue. Then again, we go further and try to find out in the case where we do not have maybe this number of workers and we have this number of workers, what happens? Eh? That is where we begin to simulate and then conduct some kind of sensitivity analysis, okay? So in the case where we have traits tell us to attend to people in the bank, what happens in the long run to our profitability? In the case where we have to tell us and then we reduce service time, eh? reducing service time means that we have to prevent our tellers from picking too many phone calls eh? and attending to uh, customers. Again, another measure will be uh, to reduce what the, the shutdown on internet. Sometimes you get to the bank and uh, they just tell you wait a while because our service is gone down. Uh, these are things that need to be looked at to optimize what the productivity and the revenue of such a business. Yeah, so basically this is the next source or let me say the relationship of business analytics techniques, which I just talked about. Okay, so you, when you look on the left side, the green, you have descriptive feeding into predictive and predictive feeding into what? Prescriptive analysis, okay? Good. Um, 
some people will okay i'm in this mode some people would want to bring exploratory here okay because what they always claim is that before you conduct a predictive uh, analytics you need to explore the data as it is uh, try to run a exploratory data analysis to see the behavior of the data so as to make to be informed on the right predictive modeling techniques to use now let's take step by step descriptive like we said it's about understanding what uh, we need an understanding of descriptive techniques okay in statistics so we need information on the measures of central location how to get them which one is appropriate for what data and then measures of variation we have a lot uh, variance standard deviation range interquartile range semi interquartile ranges we have the uh, quartiles, um, in fact, so many of them, uh, the deciles and so, so on and so forth. Then we also talk about uh, the shape and distribution, okay? Where we use graphs like histograms, pie charts, et cetera. We, we need to have information on that. Then we come to predictive analytics. In predictive analytics, uh, basically, we, we call them advanced what analytics eh? and usually the methods that are used are also referred to as data mining what tools okay so we need to be well informed on some of these data mining techniques which are able to tell patterns within the data okay then we it, we, we need a strong understanding of statistical analysis in general uh -huh. without that we, we are going to fall short when it comes to predictive analysis, analytics. Then when it comes to prescriptive, here we are talking about making logics, eh? logical decisions, okay? So someone can say that both descriptive, predictive, and possibly exploratory uh, analytics all feed into what? Uh, prescriptive analytics, okay? Because this is where we make decision out of your descriptive, out of your predictive, and out of your exploratory. We have to make decisions based on that. That notwithstanding, we have techniques, okay, for descriptive analytics solely. Then these techniques will call for various softwares. And uh, we have two main types, which we have the GUI and then the graphical user interfaces. And then we have the code code based softwares. Okay. When I talk about graphical user interfaces, we are talking about softwares that have icons, eh, which can just allow the user to uh, easily interact with what? With a computer. Okay. So examples are SPSS and uh, Minitab. Then we also have softwares which are code based, like the R the R plus, the MATLAB, and so on. We have Python and the, and the rest, okay? Good, then we also have softwares like Sova, which is also used in the, especially the predictive analytics, okay? And for us in class, our focus will be on the use of SPSS and uh, the use of Sova. Huh? So we'll focus more on the graphical user, uh, interfaces okay for our practical or for our studies okay any questions so far if you have if, if you have any question you can ask okay so in the absence of questions, um, let me continue. You have to prepare questions in any case, because I'm going to grade you at the end of the class with the questions, your contribution to the class. So you need to prepare some questions for me by the time we finish. Okay, so we have a demonstration of a descriptive analytics 
Okay, output over here. Um, I wish this one could be much bigger. Let me just increase the size a bit. So this is data we are gathering on the sales of various electronic devices from a company. Okay, so we have devices like um, home and office phones. We have, uh, uh, how do we call it, this game part. We have the recording pen and then the headphones. We have uh, fans and air conditioners. We have cell phones, accessories. We have mounts and other devices, okay? And then we have data on the, when you look at it carefully, we have the categorization, okay, of the item. We have the type, we have the, um, I think the total sales that was made, okay? And then the percentage of the revenue as a result of those sales given. So these are the data sets that are generated. Then based on that, we can easily describe the data, okay, and come out with some patterns like line plots, okay, for various years. So when you come here, it gives a comparison for these various or the average sales in 2001, 2010, and uh, 2009, okay? Yes, in 2009. Mm -hmm. So we can clearly see the trend and we are seeing that in 2009, we appear to have made what? More sales because this is total sales by month and year, okay? So we are able to make more sales uh, in 2009 in all the months, okay? Even the lists, yeah, the list was observed somewhere in um, October in 2009, okay? But basically in all months, you could see that there was very high sales in 2009, which means, which obviously tells us that we may have done something right, right in 2009, okay? which we have to go back and probably implement it in 2011, okay? Or in the next years to come, you understand? So based on this, we, we are able to find out some pattern and we are able to come out with, a, let's say a question that what did we do right to get this high number of sales, okay? Good, and uh, saying this brings me to, uh, this example of uh, the Nokia mobile phone company, okay? We realized that about 10 years back, Nokia was one of the top companies, mobile phone producing companies in the world, okay? Everybody wanted to go for Nokia because they, that was a standard brand, okay, across the globe. But you see, with the introduction of um, Android, uh, Nokia decided not to go using Android. Now they are, they are, in fact, their brand almost fell out of the system and they have finally ended up what purchasing or signing on to Android. And they are now creeping back into the market. You see, so some of these decisions and these patterns help you to know whether what you did in the past, okay, was positive or not. Uh, and then helps you to realign what your decisions as a company. Okay, now by category, we can also see that home appliances are one of the most bought what uh, items or products for the company. Eh? So you want to keep your eyes on home appliances and find out those who are purchasing such products. Okay, good. Then again, even with the minimum products like audio products, uh, which is the first on the, on, the, on the list, okay, or on the graph, you want to find out because sometimes audio products may be more profitable to you as a company, though you are producing it in low quantities. Uh, so you may want to look at it. Are we making the wrong decision with our advertisement? 
Okay, are we meeting the right uh, target uh, customers? Okay, so you want to restructure, restructure your marketing strategies and target probably new customers or target the customers you have at hand mm, at any point in time so as to remind them that you have new products on audio. Okay, then you can also maximize what? Your profit or your sales of audio uh, devices. We have more charts based on descriptive uh, analytics. So we have data and then we can see various kind of graphs. These graphs inform us a lot, okay? Then again, these graphs are further graphs. These are box plots, okay? Box plots, which were meant to, uh, I think the, the history which behind this data was uh, an HR manager trying to investigate whether females were less paid in a company as compared to their male compatriots, okay? And then once they plotted the data, let me rearrange a bit. So in the first graph here, you see we have uh, females, males, and it generally looks like the salary of males uh, appears to be high when you look at the center of the box plots, okay? So generally it looks like males have higher salaries than females. But if you go on to other metrics, which are used to classify these same data sets, which is we look at experience, okay, of the males and female, you'll find out that the females have more experience than the males, but we are having an issue with their salary. The, the females also seem to have what? Uh, less salary than the males. So, which means that there, there are issues, even when it comes to experience. Then further plots, further descriptive analysis, tell us some other parties, okay? Here, when you look at it, the, the males are, this is a three variable plot, okay? It's still a scatter plot, but this time, segregating between males and females. So we have a plot of salary and experience of males and females, and females are plotted with round black uh, spots, while the males have the triangular red spot. Okay, you look at it carefully by studying the data sets. Uh, uh, I wanted to make some notes, but I'm not in. Just a minute. Let me see if I can go to the slide mode and make those comments.